Today, we're looking at five Python f-string tricks that you definitely need to know about. Now, let's start with the basic f-string usage. If you aren't aware, f-strings were released in Python version 3.6. They're a much more convenient way of adding variables inside of strings or actually embedding expressions. Now, let's look at the old way of formatting strings so you can see how much better f-strings are. So if you look right here, I have this variable old format. And you can see that if I want to embed variables inside of here, I put a set of curly braces and then I use this dot format and I have the corresponding variables in the position in which I want them to be embedded. So this string is going to print out, hello, my name is name, which is Alice, and I am age years old, which is 30. Now this is fine, but if we start getting a little bit more complicated and add other formatting methods, this gets kind of annoying and it's not really the cleanest way to write things. Here is the new f string method. Now in this method, you simply put a lowercase or uppercase f, doesn't matter which one it is, before the string can be single or double quoted or even triple quoted, and then you can just embed any expression you want inside of curly braces. So now we get the same thing, hello my name is Alice and I am 8 years old without having to add this dot format and having to add all these different variables in their corresponding position. Now obviously f-strings are more useful than just that, and you can actually use them to do formatting. So here's a simple example where I have some float, 1234.56789. Now what I might want to do is actually round this float off and just print out, for example, two significant digits. Now I can do that by writing price, and then colon dot 2f. When you put the colon here, this specifies you're going to be adding some formatting options and you have a wide array of options that you can specify here. When you do a dot and then some number and f, this specifies the number of decimal places you want to round off to. So if I did something like 4, we'd be rounding to 4. If I did 1, rounding to 1 place, and then obviously 2, rounding to 2. If I print this, you can see that we get the price is 1234.57. Now there's a lot of other formatting options and here's a useful one. So let's say we have a large number. Sometimes these can be difficult to read, so we may actually want to separate the number using commas so it's easier for us to understand what its value is. To do that, you can do a colon and then a comma, and if we print this one out, you can see that it now separates this and very clearly shows us that this number is 1 million. Now another useful thing that we can do is actually format dates. So in this case, you can see I have a date time object, and I can format that by getting simply the year, month, and date. Now let's quickly look at what happens if I don't add the formatting and I print this out, and you can see that it gives us this long string with a bunch of information that we probably don't want. So instead, if we add the formatting option now by doing our colon and then the format that we want, and then we run the code, you can see it gives us a nice date in the format that we're looking for. Obviously, you can change this around and re replace you know, the year, month, date in any order that you want, and there's a ton of other formatting options, and I'll show you some more later in this video. Now another very useful trick is doing text alignment within f-strings. So here you can see there's three main characters that we can use after the formatting character. So we put our colon and then we can use the less than sign, the greater than sign, and the hat. Now the less than sign will do a left align, the greater than sign will do a right align, and then the hat will do a center align. Now this is very useful when you want to print out things like tables in the terminal, and I'll quickly show you an example of what this looks like and we'll look at it in more depth. So here you can see that we get our text left aligned and we're using 10 characters. We get our text right aligned, again using a total of 10 characters, and then we get our text center aligned using again 10 characters. In this case it's going to pad, I believe, two on the left and then three on the right. Regardless, you can see how this works. It gives us nice alignment. Now we can change this to be any number that we want. We can do something like 12. So if we go here and print this out, you can see now that the alignment is slightly different, shifted by two characters because we've increased that amount. Now another useful thing that we can do here is we can actually have a variable for the amount of padding or for the alignment. So let's say I do something like width is equal to 10, now I can actually embed another variable within this f-string variable using another set of curly braces. So this way, if I replace all of these characters here, I don't need to manually type in 10 each time, I can actually dynamically set the width, which is super useful because now I can just change it in one variable. So if I run this now, you can see that we get, again, that alignment, and I can simply change this one variable, and now it will change within here. So kind of a useful thing when you want to add a variable within the formatting key here, just simply embed it in another set of curly braces. 
Now just to show you a quick example of why you'd want to use something like this, you can see the following. What I'm doing here is getting a bunch of sample data, names, ages, and occupations, and then I want to print that out in some form of table. So what I can do is add the alignment here for my name, my age, and my occupation. In this case, I'm doing a left align, but I can do any type of alignment that I want. And when I run the code here, you can see that I get a really nicely formatted table and everything's easy to read compared if you were trying to do this manually. Now, the next trick to look at is F string debugging. Now, a lot of times when you're using F strings, you're using them to debug your code or print out the value of variables. Now, you can do that with something like this, where you manually write the variable name, you put an equal sign, and then you put whatever the variable or the expression is. So if we print this out, you can see we get x equals 10, y equals 5, x plus y equals 15. However, there is actually a better and faster way, and that's using the following line. So look at this now. Rather than having to write out the name of the variable, I can simply inside of an f string variable here, put the variable, and then put an equal sign. When I do this, Python knows to automatically print out something that looks exactly like this. So it will start by printing out the variable name, then it will put an equal sign, and then it will put whatever the value of the expression is. So let me just comment this one out. And when we run the code here, you'll see we get the exact same thing x equals 10, y equals 5, and then x plus y equals 15. So whenever you want to just print out what the value of a variable is, and you want to know what that variable is, so you want the name associated with it, simply use this. And that way, whenever you change the name of a variable, or you change whatever the value is, you don't really need to change anything in your f string, it will just automatically get printed out in this kind of nice debugging format. Another great thing is that you can embed a long expression here. So you can actually see what the expression was that was equal to a value. So you're no longer guessing or trying to come up up with some particular name for the expression that you want to see the value of. So now we'll move on to a bunch of other format combinations that you can use. Now, obviously there is a ton of different ways to format using F strings and I can't show all of them to you in this video, but here's a quick list of some ones that are pretty useful and they'll actually give you a link to the documentation. So for example, you can format a number as binary, as octal, as hexadecimal, as hexadecimal in uppercase, as hexadecimal with the prefix. If you're doing something like a color, for example, you can format something using percentages. So if we do this, it's gonna give us 86 or 87 sorry, 0.6%. We can format to two decimal places, which we've already seen, but we can also combine this with something like the comma separator. So now we'll get that thousand separation as well as the rounding to two decimal places. Now we can also do something like pad the number with zeros, and then we can have 10 width, which is what we're doing here, and then round it to two decimal places. We also have the ability to show the sign of the number. So in this case, it will show whether it's positive or negative. So let's print this out and you can see all of the results that we're getting. So we have binary, octal, hexadecimal, hexadecimal, hexadecimal with prefix, the percentage, it automatically adds the percent sign for us, two decimal places, comma as thousand separator, zero padded with 10. So this one's actually interesting. Whenever you're adding some kind of width, in this case, we're doing it to the number, we can specify that we actually want to add some padding character. And in this case, we want to pad it with zero. Then we have the ability to show the sign. In this case, it's positive. But if we were to change this to a negative number, then it would show us that sign. And you can see we get negative popping up here. Now, we also have the ability to combine a bunch of other formatting codes here. And I'll quickly go over to the documentation so you can see how this works. So for example, we have format specifications here. We have the ability to fill with any character. We can align using these characters. We can add the sign. We can specify the width, which is what this is doing here. We can use a grouping option like the underscore or the comma. We can specify the precision and we can change the type using all of these different codes. Now there's a few other ones. And as you scroll through here, you can get all the information on them. But the point is F strings are super useful and you definitely should be using them in your Python code because they can save you a ton of time and allow you to do some great formatting. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.